Kick it to Scoop. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL Information, Trade Rumors and Results. Got a very loaded show for you guys and girls today. We obviously got the world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. Going to go through my team of the week, my super coach talk, and review the rounds that's gone and upcoming. And for the first time in about six to seven weeks, my rolling all Australian team is back. I'm going to go through that, but it will be for the final time, as I like my Scoops medal, which I mentioned last week was the last week of it being mentioned. At the Scoops medal and my All-Australian team will be announced in between the buy round or round 24 and the week one of finals, obviously in separate videos, of course. So you look forward to that. It's the last time you see the rolling All-Australian team and, yeah, and everything else. And first off, I want to start off with this. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. And just please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already to this YouTube channel. We'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. When I aim for 20 likes for this video, it costs absolutely nothing to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. We're well over 2260 subs. So really appreciate it. When we get to 3,000, there will be some form of a giveaway. And again, like when we hit 2K, you'll find out once we hit that milestone. Obviously, a mixed round of footy. We're going to go through all that. Unfortunately, my Saints lost. We kept the top eight spot vulnerable now, as did a few other sides. Fremantle blew their chances of being in that eight conversation, top eight conversation. Same with the Suns. We'll go through all that in the review second section very, very shortly. But first off, let's start off with the world-famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. Oh, what are we going to bang on about today? I didn't tell you off the top. I wanted to leave for this reason alone. Two things. The Toby Nankerb suspension, which has been sent to the tribunal. Now, I'm I'm recording this a night before you would normally, when you will see this, which is a rarity, but I have to for, for other reasons, other commitments. So I'm recording this the night before. So I'm sure Toby Nankerb would front the tribunal on Tuesday night. They generally do it. But regardless, here's the fact of this. His bump to Jake Lloyd impacted the game for the Swans. They were going very well at that stage. And then there was a cheap hit from Toby Nankerb, who's known to be suspended a fair bit and do these type of inc- being, being involved in these type of incidents. But what annoyed me the most about this was not only what he did, it's the club slash fan reaction to this incident of Richmond fans. They're going, oh, that's nothing. How could he be suspended? Things like that. Or how could he get sent to the tribunal? It's rubbish. It's ridiculous. Whatever they want to say. But last time I checked, if we backtrack to last year, when Tom Stewart done a similar incident to Dion Prestia, um, the fans wanted Tom Stewart's blood at Richmond. But now it's happening the other way around. They've done it to another opposition player. And they say the complete opposite. You can't have it both ways. You either disliked what Tom Stewart did and what Nankervis did, or you liked both. You can't have one of each way. It's plain and simple. It is absolutely ridiculous. And yet Andrew McWalter, the filling interim coach at the moment, defend Toby Nankervis' action, saying it's within his spirit and we want him to keep doing that. Well, he's going to keep on getting suspended, plain and simple, if you like how he does not He plays on the edge, sure. He's going to get suspended a lot, lot more, especially with the new um, way they're interpreting suspensions these days. It's just... I just to, be, to say I'm shocked is an understatement. It's it just... The fans is hypocritical, as Richmond saying stuff like that. When they weren't happy when it happened to press here from Stewart, and fair enough too. But now to do something similar, and now your opinions is complete opposite of what you thought last year when it happened against you. But now you did it to someone, and it's apparently fine. <laughs> Double standards. I mean, it's mainly the fans at Richmond, not so much the club itself. But Toby Nankervis is co-captain. He let the club down. He did have a good third quarter, which set up their win in the end against the Swans in that close game. But he's going to be on the sidelines for at least three weeks. So Dylan Grimes going to have to ma- mantle the troops as the captain for the next three weeks at least. To the Richmond fans in particular, and Toby Nankervis, lift your game. Pathetic. Now the other thing. As I say most weeks, the umpiring is embarrassing. It truly, truly is. Now, I'm going to mention some examples in the St Kilda game. Now you can only say, oh, here we go, he's playing the umpires. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you how bad they were. In this particular game, it was very, very noticeable. There would be incidents where you get freeze that aren't freeze, and there'd be some freeze you don't get that they don't give, which they should. Dropping the ball was a main, major one right now. Did the umpires pay dropping the ball anymore? Like, there were so many times where Melbourne would try and run through someone 
to get tackled, drop it, or just get the ball in general, get tackled, drop it without disposing it legally. And it was just let off numerous times in this game. It was ridiculous. And it happens throughout lots of games. But in particular in this game, it was very noticeable. And it's really frustrating, especially when you're on the end of it. But just in general, watching it, it's just, it's really annoying. It happens week after week after week in pretty much every game. The four umpires is a joke. I've said this many a times before, and I'm going to keep on saying it until they get rid of four. Before the season started, I thought, I'll give this a go and think it might be a good thing. But that it has not. It is getting worse week after week after week, overruling each other. You would think there's more eyes set on the play. You'd be able to pick all these dropping the balls, but they're not. They're downing each other. They're taking over the other from the mile away, sometimes for the right reasons, but sometimes not for. It's like, it is, it is really embarrassing. And, um, yeah, it's just really frustrating. It's just, I don't know what they're going to do. Andrew Dillon's coming in the new roles to see him when the Gills departs in the season. They need to fix it now. It's getting worse week after week after week. In the St Kilda game alone, they had four experienced umpires umpiring this game. And even they cannot umpire it properly. So what's that say for the rest? Just think about it. The AFL umpiring department, I say most weeks, I really could say it every week, but I try not to, but this week I'm going to mention it again. Lift your game. Pathetic. <sighs> Hope you guys enjoyed that edition of the World Famous segment. Scoops goes bang. Now, of course, it's now time for my AFL team of the week. I know it's heavily debated the team of the week, but here it is. All right, from the back line, the pockets, Luke Ryan and Jimmy Webster. Full back, Stephen May. The half back line, the flank is Isaac Quainer and Sire Wanganee Malira. Centre half back, Sam Taylor. The wingers, Errol Goulden and Shy Bolton. Centerman, Nick Dacos. The flankers, Jack Gunston and Stephen Cornelio. Centre half forward, Harry Mackay. Forward pockets, Cody Waitman and Tyson Stengel. Full forward, Aaron Norton. The Ruckman, Rowan Marshall. The Rovers, Lockie Neal and Zach Merritt. The interchange consists of Sean Darcy, Harris Andrews, Jesse Hogan and Darcy Parrish and the sub, Mitch Duncan. Now, we'll get to the emergencies first as well. I put a long list of emergencies just to kind of show you how hard it was to select this round. On the emergency, there's a long list of emergencies. Jordan Dawson, Rory Laird, Jeremy McGovern, Ollie Florent, Christian Petrarca, Caleb Daniel, Jake Riccardi, Connor Rosie, Jade Gresham, and Tom Stewart. That is a long list of emergencies. But now for the reasons why, I'll just put that up there for a few seconds, the reasons for the back line, it was really hard to be key position defenders this, uh, this week. Ryan can play as a tall, Stephen May, Sam Taylor, McGovern was on the emergency list. Uh, it's, it was really hard to pick. And Harris Andrews on the bench. It's just very, very hard to pick this week. But the reasons for each individual that are on in the starting 22 slash sub, Luke Ryan, albeit Freire's loss to Carlton, he was very, very good. He had 38 possessions, high efficiency as he always does, but like 13 intercept possessions and around 8-1%. Yes, his team was bad but it's hard to ignore a great performance, single-handle performance like that. He was absolutely fantastic. Stephen May, unfortunately, once Max King got off, which we're going to get to King in a minute in the Saints preview part, um, they just kept hitting it to him, partly due to him defending well and timing it perfectly, and also just our kicking as well. He had 28 possessions, had like 12 marks. Even with King there, he was always going to be trouble. But without King, when he went out in the first 30 seconds of the game, it just made it even easier for him. And we just played it into his hands by bombing it to him. Jimmy Webster, and he goes, oh, well, some good or lost. But then again, it's the individuals here. Jimmy Webster held Cozzy Pickett goalless and to four possessions. Pretty good, if you ask me. He did that to Charlie Cameron a few weeks ago when Charlie Cameron kicked the goal on the siren in the last quarter when we played them. So Jimmy Webster's had two tough tasks in the last four weeks, and those two in particular – who are higher quality small forwards, he's destroyed. So Jimmy deserves a spot there. And he had 20 possessions himself, mind you, 
been a great game from Jimmy Webster. Half back line, the flankers was Isaac Quain, as I said before, 28 disposals. A key pattern to the Collingwood's runoff halfback. Very exciting player. Had a lot of marks as well. Service spot on the team. Sam Taylor had about 18 disposals from the Giants in a close game against the Hawks. Had about 13-1% as he was just a shoe in to get in there. Um, absolutely had a great game with Sam Taylor for the Giants. Now to Sidewang and Emilera again. You can say, oh, another St Kilda player. But again, he had 33 possessions off halfback at like 76%. Um, and he his best trade, as I've always said, is his ball use. He's had games where he's had costly turnovers, and he had a few in this game. But he was pretty consistent this game compared to some other rounds where he's had high possessions but had a fair bit of turnovers involved in that. Where this game he didn't. He rarely had any. He did pretty well, especially without his counterpart in Brad Hill off the other flank as well and wing. Um, and the wingman, Errol Goulden, was the Swans' best player. Um, 31 possessions and a goal. 80% in tough conditions. And it was wet for part, wet for conditions for part of the game. He did really, really well. Um, deserved a spot in the wing. Nick Dacos, two goals and 28 disposals. Not the biggest disposal game. But in the third quarter alone, I think he had 12 possessions and two goals. The Pies were coming from behind. Surprise, surprise again to a degree. And they just put the foot on the pedal in the third quarter, the Pies. And the quarter was won. The game was won partly, or well, 99% of that, that was won due to that third quarter. And from Nick Dacos alone, to a spot in the starting midfield. Shai Bolton had around 30 disposals. Decent sufficiency, like Golden in the wet conditions against each other in a close game. About 17 contested possessions to serve a spot for the team. The half four line, Jack Gunston, back at his return game. Yes, it was against the Eagles, but six goals and 20 disposal decisions cannot be ignored. I'll be more, for Brisbane's sake, I'll be more interested to see how he goes in the upcoming games against far better opposition. But then again, the Eagles did have Hearn and Bar- uh, McGovern and Barras and Duggan in that back line. So, I mean, they had some better defenders that they've had compared to previous weeks. Um, Harry Mackay, three goals, 20 disposals. Hard to ignore that performance. He had to get in the team for sure. Stephen Keneally, I put him on the half-forward flank, played midfield, can play forward two, kick three, 30 disposals. He was a lock. Cody Waitman, despite their loss, he kicked four goals, two, 17 disposals, deserved a spot on the team. Aaron Norton, very similar, four goals, two as well. I uh, like 13 disposals, about five, six marks. So it's from the team and the only good defender in Darcy Moore, who he probably had the win over in the first half, but definitely second half probably belonged to Darcy, but Norton was still okay then. Kicked one goal in each quarter. Tyson Stengel, he had five goals, around 20 disposals as well. Had to be a lock there. Rowan Marshall, and even again, I will, he's lost again, like the other guys. Rowan Marshall had a tougher task than anyone has had in that ruck this year. 30 disposals for a ruckman. First off, he's a massive tick. Then to do that against Gorn and Grundy just makes it even more impressive. He and more disposals and marks, tackles, whatnot combined. More marks, tackles, and disposals combined to Gorn and Grundy. The the rupture of the people. I mean, I don't think it's really worked this year, but then again, obviously, they've got to both play in the senior team. He was fantastic, and I'll get to that in a bit more detail in the Saints preview game. Uh, Lockie Neal, 34 possessions, decent efficiency. I think he had 87%, of, 83, 87% efficiency from midfield, and half of those possessions were contested, so, so, and a lot of clearances, so showed what a great game Lockie Neal had. Zach Merrick to goal on 39 disposals. Wasn't the best efficiency, but he had a lot of metres gained um, as a part of their chains as well. In the chain, Sean Darcy was so hard to ignore. He had like 60 hit-outs, 15 disposals. Yes, he was on Lewis Young. It doesn't matter. It's got to be recognised. Um, he had, I think, during the last quarter, they said on the coverage, he had 20 hit-outs to advantage. That is a huge, huge number, let alone at that stage of the game, in a whole game in general. So he had to be in there. Had Marshall not had that, that insane ruck game, well, Tussie would have been the starting ruck. They were, both had phenomenal performances individually, despite those their clubs losing. Harris Andrews, I don't, I thought I was a bit too top heavy with key defenders, but then again, Luke Ryan is in is a versatile defender. He doesn't have to play as a key position. Quain is the same, so I could fit one more tall if I needed to. And it was Harris Andrews, thirteen one percenters, fair bit of marks, and nineteen disposals. He, he just had to be in there as well. It was so hard to not include him. 
Same with the key forwards. Jesse Hogan, bit of, he can run up the ground as well. Kick four to Jesse, four goals two. 15 disposals. He kicked a goal late. That was very important to get them the win. When the Giants started well, the Hawks came back. The Giants had put it out to a bit further when you thought the Hawks weren't coming back. Hawks went bang, 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 late in the third, start the last. You thought, oh, hello. And then Hogan stopped that late to get his side the match important win the Dark Horse of the Eight. The Giants still said that. And then the other bench play- player was Darcy Parrish, 39 disposals as well. Better efficiency than merit, um, but they're very similar in other stats. Um, and then Mitch Duncan, I thought for 30 disposals, only eight contestant, but at 90%, it's just hard to ignore. For, and he's not a fullback where they just chip, 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 chip. And he had a decent amount of meters game. So I was tossing between him and one of the um, – him and Jordan Dawson. I just went Mitch Duncan just – Feel for his high efficiency um, with those meters gained. Just had he had average efficiency, he probably wouldn't be in the team at all. So, um, but yeah, he did well. So he's in there. All right. What did you guys think of that team of the week? Comment down below what you would have done and what you would have changed. Now it's time to go review the round 17 games. And well, <laughs> Hmm. We're gonna go. We're gonna go in order first. We We've got to go in order. We'll get to the Saints game. I know you are waiting for that, but we go in the order here. Richmond Swans. It was Thursday night at the MCG. It was Richmond eighty-eight defeated the Swans seventy-five. Richmond by thirteen points. I alluded to it before. Once Jake Lloyd went off, it seemed to impact them from a team structure as well. Jake Lloyd gets a great run of half. Like like Nick Blakey, they obviously missed Jake Lloyd, who's starting to get into form now in the last month. So he was a huge out, and he's a decent player in general. Not in his best all Australian type form, but in his last month, has he's gone back to that best form. So he was a crucial blow, and they'll unfortunately miss him next week, the Swans, in their next clash. But he was neat to play. He was okay. Goulden was their best player. Richmond was Shy Bolton, Toby Nan Curvis, who had a good third quarter. Uh, Tim Toronto had some solid numbers again. Um, but yeah, then when, the, when Lloyd went, as I said, Seemed to shift to the Swans, but they were still in it. Luke Parker was pretty solid. Chad Warner was pretty solid. I thought Buddy was okay, but remember, if you recall, the Swans blew it for themselves. Multiple chances late. Buddy, two missed opportunities. You seen Buddy snap from the right-hand side for a left foot. It was a perfect spot for a left footer. He shanked it, didn't even make the distance, and went towards the boundary line on the other side. You, know, you can't make excuses. I don't care how old you are, but someone like Buddy or anyone on their right side, should have scored from that. How He's not the only one that does that. But in the moment it happened, you would think Buddy would get that nine times out of ten, and he was not even close. He missed another opportunity late. Then there was one where Justin McInerney had a chance to mark it over the back of the pack, running towards the boundary line, but just missed it, and then got trapped on the boundary, and then went, went out of bounds. So they had a few chances late, the Swans. Now, unfortunately for them, it'll be hard to make the eight now, with this loss. They mathematically can still make it, like Freo and the Suns, but they just made it all that much more harder with them sides losing. Next game we're going to go through was the Friday night game. It was down at Marvel Stadium. It was the Bulldogs and the Pies. Western Bulldogs, 77, defeated by the Pies, 89. Collingwood by 12 points. Collingwood do what Collingwood do best, and that is trail from behind. Well, if they're not way ahead already, they come from behind and end up pinching the game from you. As I said before, Nick Dacos, 12 possessions, two goals in the third quarter alone, won them the game. Jordan Dago had a really good two and a half quarters to start the game. It was really influential as well. For the Bulldogs, Caleb Daniel did pretty well. Cody Waitman and Norton obviously both kicked four. It was the Bulldogs game at the start. I think they hit the first three goals of the game, the Bulldogs. And you thought, holy moly. But we never ride off the pies. They come back from behind, no matter really what the margin is. But the Bulldogs will be disappointed with that. They're in that log jam around St. Gilda on the ladder, around Melbourne, um, around the Crows and Essendon. So they'll be really disappointed of how they went there in the end, considering how they started. Uh, the next game to go through was on the Saturday games. The first one was the Brisbane Lions and the Eagles. Not much to say on this other than Brisbane won by 81 points, 116 to 35. Well, they got McGovern back. He did pretty well, Jeremy McGovern. 20 disposals. Nine marks, played the first three quarters. Pretty good game for a guy that's missed since round three. Uh, Liam Duggan had 33. Um, but there wasn't much other shining lights for the Eagles. And 
for the Lions, as I said earlier, Guns kicked six of 20 touches. Fantastic in his game back. First game back in a month. Daniel Rich played in the twos on the weekend. We'll see if he comes back next game to the Lions. Um, Neil was fantastic. McCluggage had a good game. Um, but, yeah, an ex- an, an a, margin, a margin you expected from the Brisbane Lions, too damn good for the Eagles, as expected. Some expected more, but Eagles are starting to slowly get some players back. So you may not see all these 100-plus blowout margins. Still big margins, but probably not to what you expect it to be. Also, they get a few more back over the coming weeks. As well, they'll probably get Hearn and Shuey back for their next game as well against Richmond on Sunday. Next game we're going to go through was the Twilight game at Giants Stadium in Sydney. GWS 85 defeated the Gi- uh, GWS 85 defeated the Hawks 72. GWS by 13 points. Riccardi's in a great patch of form the last month. Didn't start the year too well. He was out of the side. He was in the side, out of the side. Was kicking goals really when he was in the team. The last month, I think he's kicked about 16 goals. He's been really good. I um, mean, four or five games, he kicked 16 goals. He's been he kicked a bag of five against the Dockers. Kicked four, yes, uh, th- three yesterday, and missed a few gettable shots as well. He's in a rip of form. Jesse Hogan's in good form as well. Him, similar to Riccardi, especially in the last month, has been very good. Canelo three and thirty, killing it. Josh Kelly, I was really surprised. Josh Kelly only had six possessions, like Gaff had for the Eagles six, but. To a degree, we've kind of seen this coming and go for the moment. But Josh Kelly, we hadn't. He's had a great year, Josh Kelly. All-Australian contender for the squad. He should be in the squad at least. And he's had a good year. Um, but, yeah, he only had six touches. Couldn't believe it when I saw that. Um, for the Hawks, Fergus Green kicked a couple. Did all right for them up forward. Um, James Warple was okay. Will Day was pretty good. But in the end, the Giants got a good win. Lane has said earlier, Jesse Hogan got an important goal late to give them the win there. The next game, here it is. The Saints and the Demons. St Kilda 58 defeated the Saints. Uh, sorry, St Kilda, I wish. St Kilda 58 defeated by the Demons, 79 Melbourne by 21 points. Well, as I said in my post, missed opportunities early. We had three posters in the first quarter. All were gettable shots. Very easy. Then you had the goal kicking. He had the unlucky bounce to Mitch Owens in the last corner when we were down by nine. They could have put it to three points. I think there was about six minutes left at that stage. Anyone's game from there. Unlucky bounce. I had 2010 nightmares of Milne with that bounce when that happened. It's like, oh. we, we, for a side that lost, I felt we played better. And that's a general feeling for some people on, in terms of the experts as well. Like, we played better. We just didn't capitalize. And it was very frustrating too. And to lose your best player in Max King 30 seconds into the game, went to tackle tackle Stephen May. What it looked like at first was a wrist injury. I was hoping he'd come back on, but Ryan Burns, a sub, came on within five minutes, who did play okay. Um, But, yeah, he had King go out straight away. He's like, well, Stephen May's going to have a field day, potentially, with his intercept marks, which he could have done with King. Much more easier for him, though, without your star forward and a younger forward brigade with Higgins out as well. And obviously, as we know, Tim Embry out as well. So you got the inexperienced forwards with the small guys like Gresham. Jack Billings, who came in, had his great first game back, kicked 1 1. And I suppose the plans are half forward mainly, did pretty well to JB. Good to have him back. Um, Zach Jones, one of the guys coming back from injury, had 20 disposals, did pretty well. Um, showed that toughness, which we're kind of missing in that midfield side of things. So he did well there. But yeah, look, going back to what I was saying to King, you lose King 30 seconds into the game, you lose Seb Ross, an experienced midfielder. 10 minutes in the game, doing a hamstring injury. Then late in the first quarter, you had Zane Cordy get concussed. It, like just That just stuffs your rotation straight up. You're playing a strong team. Then you have that happen. And then the key position guys in particular, Ross, albeit a decent midfielder, is a bit replace, is replaceable in terms of the structure. It's much harder. Key position, you had Sharman, who's mainly a forward, who's played the odd game here and there as, as a sub, as a key defender or part of games as a key defender or intercept defender. He swung back when King went off and Cordy went forward. Then they swapped it a couple of times in that quarter. Then when Cordy went back a second time as a forward, when they swapped a second time, him and Sharman, then he ended up getting concussed. And then Sharman, again, throughout the game, kept switching around. So stuff your structure up, stuff your rotations up, and it's just very frustrating. Jack Steele in his 150th. I congratulate Steele on a great game. 31 disposals of goal. 80-odd percent efficiency. 
absolutely terrific. Uh, for Melbourne, their best play was Stephen May. Now, I know people are saying, what about Charlie kicked four and 20? No, not a four and 20 pie. He kicked four and had 20 disposals. I don't feel like that was a game where he was, was dominant at all. Again, I know how you get goals. It doesn't matter how you get them as long as you get them. I get that. But if you want to go individually, was he fantastic? I don't think he was great. It wasn't bad, but he wasn't amazing or anything like that. Two goals out the back. Um, kicked a great goal in the last quarter to seal the game. But, um, yeah, he's just, it wasn't as great as some say it was. I thought Stephen May was pretty good. Gordon Crandy, Cedric Marshall were well held. And I would, again, want to give credit to Rowan Marshall. He was fantastic. As I said, 30 disposals he had. Gordon and Grundy combined had less than 30 touches. The hit outs was about 13 to 20. So he did pretty well there because he actually got a few clearances and grabs out of the rock and did pretty well. That's probably the best career game I've seen Rowan Marshall ever play. He's had some great games, but against the competition he was against, the, the expectations weren't that he was going to dominate them too. If he could be a com- competitive with both, we'd be happy. But he destroyed them both. It's great to see Roe Marshall had a terrific game. Saints, hopefully, at Hill back, Higgins back, and Battle back next week. And potentially some guys from the twos that might get in as well, like Tommy Campbell. Um, but yeah, change will have to be made, and um, we'll have to see what happens there. The next game on the Saturday night was the Poitiers Footy Club and the Gold Coast Suns. Gold Coast, they controlled the first half, but in the second half, it was all the power. The third quarter was where the dominance happened from the power. I think it was 11 goals to six in the second half, which didn't help the Suns at all. It was, in the end, Port Adelaide 106, defeated the Gold Coast Suns 73, Port by 33. As I said, Tuke Miller had a decent return game. Matty Rao was okay. Noah Ransom was really good. Jared Witts, you know, another great season. Witts he's having. Yes, against an inexperienced ruckman as Sam Hayes, but he's been in the system for about four years now. Joe Witts is a fantastic ruckman, highly underrated, was robbed of all the training last year. You don't need me to repeat that. You should know that by now. So that's for so long, especially in that when that All-Australian team was announced and a few other videos from here and there. He was terrific. Um, Levi Caswell kicked four, too very late when the game was dead and buried, but he did do okay. Ben King got subbed off tactically. I thought it was injured. The AFL app had said sub-injured, and I thought... Oh, that's not good. Hopefully nothing serious. And I listened to Shuey Jew's presser after the game, and he said it was a tactical move because they wanted to take one of the tools off. He was the one doing the least amount of damage, so they took him off. Uh, but he should be all right against the Saints this week. But, yeah, disappointed for them considering the position they were in. But that third quarter is where it stuffed them up. And in the second half alone, as I said, 11 goals to six, not that good. And that third quarter stuffed them right up, and they were kind of chasing from there. Connor Rosie had a pretty good game. Zach Butters was quiet. Jeremy Finlayson, what a great year he's having under the circumstances him and his partner have been through. Um, it's great to see him doing very well. He had a game 100 as well. So what under him. And Charlie Dixon, his teammate, ex-son, played game 200 and kicked the goal in his 200th. Now we'll go to the, su- we'll go to the Sunday games. Pretty obvious result here. Geelong spanked the Roos 100 and 25 to 63. Geelong by 62. Stengel kicked five and 20. Hawkins kicked a few. Myers was decent. Duncan was decent. Uh, for the Roos, LDU, Luke Davis, Uniac was good. Kicked a couple and had to kick two and 28 touches. Tristan Cherry had a lot of hit outs, but Geelong don't have a recognised Ruckman. Jack Zeeble was a sub. Had 20 in three, three and a bit quarters. Did pretty well considering he was just originally dropped. Todd Goldstein was dropped. Played in the twos tonight. Um, had a dominant amount of hits. Had 50 hit outs. We'll see if he comes back in. Um, but, yeah, the result was expected. Cooper Harvey, son of Boomer Harvey, kicked the goal on debut. Obviously, it wouldn't make for you would have seen in the last quarter there. But for the Roos in general, it was a shocking day. He hit the first goal of the game through Darcy Tucker. And after that, it all went downhill from there. And they lost Griffin Logue to a knee injury as well. Uh, next game we got was one of the games of the round of Marble Stadium. It was the Bombers. Hosting the Crows. Again, Adelaide loved to be in high scoring halves. It was like 70 or 80 to like 50. It was just unbelievable. This high scoring. Essendon have been involved in some as well. Like these two teams love high scoring and end up being that. Essendon 115, defeated the Crows 97. Essendon by 18 points. Essendon now moved to fifth in the ladder. There's 0.3% ahead of my Saints. Adelaide had a few opportunities late in the last minute and a half to score to, and score a goal to put the Saints back on top of Essendon, but it's fine. It's only 0.3%. There's still about eight rounds to go. 
So seven rounds to go. So we, we're seven games to go. Uh, that race between fifth to twelfth is still very tight. For the Bombers, Parrish was good. Merritt was good. Peter Wright was good. Um, down in their back line. But the Crows, Dawson, Laird, their usual suspects. M- Mitch Hinge was pretty pretty good as well for the Crows. And the final game of the round was down at Optus Stadium, and it was the Dockers getting absolutely destroyed at home. Fremantle 45, smashed by the Blues 98, Carlton by 53 points. Well, fair to say I didn't see this coming. I thought Carlton were a chance, but not expected to win. But they did, and they destroyed the Dockers from the from the get go. It was like Freo kicked two seven, I think it was in the first half. They were absolutely terrible. Fife was out injured. Brayshaw was pretty solid, as was Sarong. The usual suspects. Darcy was terrific, as I said, about sixty hitouts and twenty plus to advan- hitouts to advantage. So he was awesome. The Blues, Mackay three and twenty. So Kerno's hundredth game, and then you had the likes of Cripps and Walsh having decent numbers as well. Matt Kennedy had a good amount of possessions around. 23-ish. Fury was subbed off late in the third quarter with a nasty knee injury, so I hope he's all good. Uh, but the Blues be up and about. They're in that eighth conversation as well. So they're in that long gem of teams now. They pass Richmond on percentage, and they pass a few other sides. So they're in that conversation for the eight. They're a game out. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the final seven weeks go in the season. All of them spots from fifth to eighth. Technically, Melbourne's as well, but I think they'll be safe now. So from fifth to eighth, St Kilda's, Essendon's, Adelaide's, and the Bulldogs, and Geelong's. Well, Geelong's not, Adelaide's not in there now, but Geelong is. And they're all up for grabs. Geelong haven't been in the eight for a while. In fact, I don't know if they've been in there at all this year, but they, they have been now. I mean, I suppose it all that matters now, but see how they go this week. It's going to be a really tough final race to the end of the season. All right, now it's time to go through my rolling all Australian team. I haven't done this for a while, the rolling all Australian team. Uh, all right, let's just let me get it up. I haven't done it for a while, so bear with me. It's my rolling all Australian team after round 17. I haven't done it since round 11, so there's going to be multiple changes. So just bear with me with that. Uh, I'm going to get that up right now. I don't know where it's gone. The graphics trying to play funny buggers with me, but it's okay. I'm going to get it up right now, and I'm going to get it up on your screens right now. There's a fair few changes. I think there's up to six changes. So we're going to go through that. Right. Now, okay. From the back line, the bo- the pockets, Callum Wilkie and Charlie Ballard. Full back, Alia Alia. Half back line, the flank is Jack Sinclair and Nick Dacos. Centre half back is Darcy Moore. The wingers, Errol Goulden and Josh Dacos. The sentiment is Tim Taranto. That's that's that part of the team so far. Then the next part, we go for the half forward line. We go consists of team back up here in front of me. Half forward line, we got Toby Green. Sorry, half forward line. The flank is Christian Petrarca and Stephen Canelio. And then the centre forward is Charlie Kerno. The forward pockets, Toby Green and Charlie Cameron. Full forward is Tex Walker. Then we go to the Ruckman. It's, you guessed it, Rowan Marshall. The Rovers, Jordan Dawson and Tom Green. The interchange, Connor Rosie. Zach Butters, Caleb Sarong, and James Sicily. Now, the James Sicily one, I was really debating about whether I do put him in there. Does he deserve to be in there? Because um, he's missed a fair few games. But that's what, I'll, that's what I've gone with for now. I mean, he's, he's still done pretty – he's done really well. He's averaging 26.9 disposals um, this season. He's probably missed about four games. He's on the cusp of – not getting in if he doesn't fix up. Really, just all he has to fix up is just not getting suspended. He's too good not to be in the team. So he just needs to lift 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 his game in that department and then he'll be all good. And then he'd be a he'd be a lock if he hadn't missed 
let's be real, he'd, he'd be a lock if he hadn't missed any other game. So there, there's the rest of the team there. You can see the uh, rolling all Australian team. See on the screen for you. Um, then the so that means the inclusions that I've had. So there's been a fair few inclusions since we last looked at the team. So I'm going to go through some of them right now. Uh, so the new inclusions from all the way back in round seven. So it's been a fair while, but the changes are in Tim Taranto, Jordan Dawson, Rowan Marshall, Tex Walker, Errol Goulden, and Connor Rosie out since around 11-1. Uh, Mason Wood, Clayton Oliver, Jared Witts, Jeremy Cameron, and Matt Rowell. I mean, you could say it's harsh for Matt Rowell. He's had low um, disposal average, but he's had a lot of contested possessions, clearances, and when the Suns were winning, he had done pretty well. Um, so I'm just going to put the uh, changes up here for you all now. All right, there it is. There. Yeah. So to reconfirm that, there is one, two, three, four, five, six inclusions. Um, but yeah, go through it one more time on the people listening on Apple Apple Podcasts and Spotify. The defenders, Cal Wilkie, Elia Elia, Charlie Ballard, Jack Sinclair, Darcy Moore, and Nick Dacos. That's the defenders. The wingers, Errol Gordon and Josh Dacos. Centerman, Tim Torino, the half along the flankers, Christian Petrarca and Stephen Canilio. Senar forward, Charlie Kerno, Forward pockets, Toby Green and Jer Charlie Cameron. Full forward, Tex Walker. Ruckman, Rowan Marshall. Rovers, Jordan Dawson, Tom Green. Interchange, Connor Rosie, James Sicily, Zach Butters and Caleb Sarong. What do you guys think? Comment down below your team and what you would have changed. Now, next thing we're going to go through is we're going to... Go through my super coach talk. I scored just just a casual two thousand four hundred and ninety five. Now, as I'm recording this, the uh, lockout hasn't ended. So, what I do know though is that I was top eight percent before the previous round. I said top seven percent last week. I don't know why. I should have been. Don't know how I dropped that low. But here's what it is. I got a terrific score. I would assume it's um, top 7, top 8%. I want to hope it's gone up. Because I somehow dropped scoring 2,400 last week. So I wasn't too happy about that. Dropped like 1,000, 1,245 or something in the rankings or 1,265. I was pretty annoyed about that, if I'm being brutally honest. But here we are. And that's the score I've scored this week. I'm pretty happy with that. I still had Jack Zebel. I got rid of Josh Dunkley. I ended up getting Zach Butters. That's a trade I ended up doing. Obviously, early in the week, I said I wasn't doing any. Then when Dunkley was ruled out to one to two weeks, the language on Friday was also that he might miss the week after Dunkley. So I'm like, I ain't I ain't dealing with this. So this is my team there. Dawson, Sinclair, Stewart, Nick Dacos, Uday and Harry Sheasel, Betras, Osen, Mullen, Charlie Constable, midfielders, Rory Laird, Andy Brayshaw, Locking Neal, Matt Rao, Christian Petrarca, Caleb Sarong, Tom Mitchell, Paddy Cripps, Bench, Jasper Fletcher, Matt Roberts, who returned in the VFL, hopefully he can get in, and Ryan Angwin, likewise. Ruckman, uh, Jared Witts and Kieran Briggs, Bench, Ned Moyle. Forwards, Zach Butters, Jack Zebel, Steve Cornelio, Connor Rosie, Tim Taranto and Errol Gordon, Bench, Ryan Marrick and Blake Drury. I did end up using Ryan Marrick this week. I didn't want to take the risk if Zebel was going to play a quarter. Marrick got like 44, wasn't expecting much. But uh, then Z went up playing and scored 59. So that would have been nice if I had known magically that there was going to be an injury. See, there was a laid out with George Wall off the rooster. So I'm really annoyed that Jack Z wouldn't come in because I would have just swapped him. Actually, I probably wouldn't have actually been able to. That actually would have rubbed salt in the wounds, actually. Z will play three and a bit quarters and he got 20 disposals. Scored only 59. A bit harsh. But uh, that's my super coach team. So right now, I've made no trains. I've got like $142,000 remaining so what super good trade are you doing i think i've got five trades left right now too i fact, no, i do so i'm using them wise i'm thinking about do i get rid of will day i want to try and get sicily and luke ryan they're the two trying to get the defense do i if i get rid of sheasel and will day with the two or zebel how do i get them how am i going to maneuver that with the 142k left over i've got right now it's gonna be very interesting it's something i have to ponder throughout the rest of this week 
And Kieran Briggs, uh, not Kieran Briggs, Jared Witts, what do I get? Keep him or not? He got another big score this week after two low scores in the 70s. Got 126, I think it was. Uh, but I'm really happy with 2 4 9 5. Uh, yeah, and now we'll go preview the round 18 games. Remember, if you haven't hit the like button so far, go smash that like button. We'll aim for 20 likes for this video. And subscribe if you haven't already. We'd we'll greatly appreciate it. Once we hit 3K, we will have a very, very special prize for the winner slash winners of the giveaway there. So keep an eye out for that. All right. And I've got an announcement to make at the end of the show, so just stay tuned for that. I'm going to review the round 18 games. Very important seven weeks for the teams in particular between 5th and 12th. Even the stars like Freo and Gold Coast and Sydney, that loss on the weekend, still important games for them. But on Thursday night, and this is one of them, Thursday night at the SCG, the final Thursday game for the home and away season is the Swans hosting the Bulldogs at the SCG, 7.20 Victorian time on Thursday night. I'm going to tip the Swans. I think they get the win. The Bulldogs will be a chance, obviously. we will go for the Swans here and personally hope they win. They're 15th right now, the Swans. Aye, aye, aye. See how far a loss could be? Now they dropped down the 15th. Didn't even think they were that low, but anyway. And then I'm, but I'm still tipping the Swans in a close game. They do well at home. Friday night at the MCG, Friday night, 7.50 Victorian time. It's Melbourne hosting the Lions. And Lions, we know as well, dog me to that, play the MCG too well. They play around at Marvel, but not the MCG. I'm tipping Melbourne, but Melbourne have been in poor form. I'm this close to tipping the Brisbane Lions, but that supposed hoodoo with them at the, uh, the MCG is why I've just purely tipped Melbourne. But I might change that, so keep an eye on that, depending on the lineups as well. See if Van Royen comes back. He had a pretty poor game in the twos. Tommy Heimel for my Saints. Played for Sandringham, destroyed Jacob Van Royen in the twos. So Van Royen might not get back in. Ben Brown was quiet. Melksham was okay. Like what? A, they got to fix something there because that four line without Bailey Fritch is getting exposed even more now already. I will tip Melbourne there. Collingwood and this is on Saturday now at the MCG, one forty-five Victorian times. The Pies hosting in the Dockers. I'll be going for the Pies there. Dockers have been too great lately. Might that might end their season. And one of the most important games of the round is Saints, other Suns, hosting my Saints at Heritage Bank Stadium in Queensland, Saturday, 2.10 Victorian time. As I said before, Hill should be back. Higgins should be back. Battle should be back. Those three will go out, Cordy, King, and Ross. Those will be the three life for life changes. Does Hunter Clark come back in after five weeks off, played a game in the twos? Does Jack Hayes come back, played three and a half quarters in the twos today, his first game back in 12 months? Does Tommy Highmore, does Tom Campbell get a game to Jack Bytel? The options are there. They've got to bring in some of them, I think. There's some other guys on the fringe that might go out like a Cooper Sharman or um, someone like that. So I'm obviously going to tip my Saints. But this is a danger game. No matter how the Suns are going, they play well at home. Yes, they'll bet against the Pies at home. But generally, they're pretty good. The Saints and Suns always play in close games. The Saints won early in the year at Marvel by about 20-odd points, 20, 22 points. It's a must-win game for the Saints. We've dropped a few, which is disappointing, and could have won some of them games. They just must win this. I don't care about the margin as long as we win. We're six at the moment. We lose this, and Geelong beat Essendon. We could f fall even further. And then if Adelaide win their game against the Giants, which is 50-50 as well, it's it'd be annoying. But I can, I can stick, see the boys getting this win. Then a few tough games at the end of the year and a few easier ones as well. So the Saints must win this game against the Suns. Come on, Sainers. Saturday, 4.35 at Marvel Stadium. Twilight game on Saturday, big time, 4.35. It's the Blues hosting the Power. The Power play Marvel well. I think they won 12 in a row at the Power. The Power won 12 in a row at Marvel. So I'm going to tip quite a late there. Carlton, they're on the rebound, though, now. They're, can you get a win, Carlton? And, Jesus, they're a firm contender for that top eight spot when it was gone four weeks ago. Another huge game Saturday night at GMHBA Stadium is Geelong hosting the Bombers. The first time the Bombers have played there in a long time, I would think, um, outside maybe the COVID year. Um, I'm... I don't know who to tip this. I've tipped Geelong purely because they're at home. But the Bombers, it wouldn't shock me if they get this win here. Another huge game Saturday night at the Adelaide Oval. It is Adelaide hosting the Giants, 9th v 10th. 7.40 Victorian time at the Adelaide Oval. I've tipped the Crows. But beware the Giants. They are my Dark Horse tip. They've had one bad game this year. I'll say it every bloody week until they don't. 
If they had one bad game this year, it was against the Pies at the G. Every other game they've lost, they've been in it to the end. They've won close games. They've won some big results against like the Dockers, for example, a few weeks ago at home in Sydney. This is a danger game for the Crows. And if the Giants win this, they could be in the eight after the round, depending on a few other results. It's it's going to be very close at the end of this season. I guarantee you they're going to get it in the last round, a few of these sides, especially if they keep in the right track. But I'm going the Crows here. Sunday games, two games on the Sunday. Sunday, one ten at Marble Stadium. It's the Roos hosting the Hawks. A one ten Marble Stadium in Victorian time. I'm going to go for the Hawks there. Showing a bit more better form than the Roos. Roos have been getting spanked a bit. The Hawks have been getting spanked too, but they've had some better games, like against the Giants on the weekend, for example. So I'm going to go the Hawks there. The two Tassie sides. I'm not playing this in Tassie. Interesting. <laughs> and then the final game at the end of the round is the Eagles, 4.40 Victorian time at Optus Stadium, hosting the Richmond Football Club. West Coast aren't winning. Richmond are winning, and it keeps their small finals hopes alive as well, but I'm tipping Richmond there, unfortunately. Now, my final thoughts are simply this. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cripper G. I'm going to roast a friend. Wish someone happy birthday, anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cripper G. I have a lot. My final thoughts are simply this too. I've got some big guests lined up. Um, can't say them all yet. But they should have some exciting announcements within the next week or two, at least with one or two of these guests. So look for that. Always trying to get guests from every league, whether it's AFL, AFLW, VFL, VFLW, the draftees, other codes even. But you'll have to wait and see. I've put in a lot of effort behind the scenes to get people on, contact a lot of people, try and get people on and whatnot. So not just for interviews, goalkeeping challenges or anything at all. So look forward to all that. Um, and yeah, another guest, another one in a few weeks' time on the 24th of July on that episode of Kicker Scoops on the Monday, which is two weeks from tomorrow or tonight. Technically, you're watching this, it'll be two weeks from tonight. There will be a very special guest on the show. Who is it? Well, I'm gonna give you one hint they love t- footy tipping. Now, you're probably going, Who the hell is that? Well, trust me, if you know, you know. They love their footy tipping and, and a few other things, but I'm not going to give it all away. That'll make it too damn obvious. Thank you all. Until next week, everyone have, the, have a great one. The most important thing of all to remember is go to the Saints and, of course, acknowledge me, the one. And come on, Saints. Important games against the Suns. Don't let us down. Go Saints and all aboard the Philippo train. <laughs>